Symptoms of the virus include coughing, fever and shortness of breath, which can progress to pneumonia. And because it's a viral infection, antibiotics don't work. We need more information. For that reason, I have decided to ask the emergency committee to meet again tomorrow to continue their discussion. The World Health Organization just de de declared this a global health emergency. At airports and train stations across the world, passengers travelling from China and some other Asian countries are being screened and isolated if they have high temperatures. But now China is banning all planes, trains, ferries and buses from leaving Wuhan. Tonight, Italy staggering as the virus rages. 475 more deaths in 24 hours, the most in a single day. The patient is a 38-year-old male who tra traveled to Italy with his wife. They were part of a group of 10 people and they arrived back in South Africa on March the 1st, 2020. The National Coronavirus Command Council has decided to enforce a nationwide lockdown for 21 days. <sighs> the year 2020, it's been, well, it's been something. I'll tell you that. So many of us have been confined to our homes in the wake of a global pandemic which has killed hundreds of thousands of people thus far and probably will kill hundreds of thousands more before all this is over. I don't want to make light of that at all, but sitting at this desk day in and day out for this entire year and getting fat while doing it, it's driving me mad. Luckily, the South African government has recently been opening up the economy and loosening restrictions a little bit. It doesn't mean by any means that the danger is behind us. But I need a holiday. I just went up the escalator when I was supposed to go down that next one over there. Got a great start to my morning. I haven't used the train since before the pandemic, so I'm a little rusty. Select your start station, let it be center. Select your end station, let it be. I live and work in Johannesburg, South Africa's biggest and busiest city, but I originally come from KwaZulu-Natal and hadn't been back in almost a year. Mm -hmm. 
I decided that a seaside break would not only let me catch up with family and relax in nature for a few days, but also document what it's like to travel during this particular moment in history. Fever? No. Have you had a cough? No. Have you had difficulty breathing? No. I mean, I know it's early in the morning, but this is the largest airport, or at least one of the largest and busiest on the continent. There are designated entrance and and it feels like the rapture has happened or something. I think the candy shop is the only open place that is. Is that restaurant open? No. Nothing is open because if you open things up, you die. Okay, no, that was a bit dramatic. Um, COVID-19 is a serious issue and I'm glad the shops are closed, but saying you die, okay, no. Um, yeah, let me not let me not be a fear monger. Always find a balance between precaution, caution, healthy concern and not losing your head to panic. So I just got my ticket back there. Um, obviously, I'm not going to film while I'm going through security questions. Uh, they did a, a wee double check of my ID because I don't look like my passport photo anymore. Um, yeah, it wasn't a big thing. They just squinted a little bit harder. The joys of traveling while trance. Given the broad restrictions on international and local travel, the airline tickets that were on offer were incredibly cheap. But as I boarded, I realized that I was not alone in taking advantage of this. We were reminded to keep a distance of 1.5 meters from one another when standing in the aisle to keep safe. But this did not apply when we were seated, and given that people were often seated right next to each other, it sort of defeated the purpose. Then, the traditional pre-flight safety briefing was replaced with an intercom briefing while flight staff stood eerily still rather than handling props or gesturing to avoid contamination.
From high above the outskirts of Johannesburg, with tiny people and cars going about their day, the world seemed very normal indeed. The virus that plagued us felt little more than a distant memory. But of course, it wasn't distant, not at all. And soon, I was back down to earth again. Yeah. Located on the north coast of KwaZulu-Natal, in the heart of Zululand, Mtunzini is a lovely little town with a single shoddy road running through the centre. It is home to some incredible nature, but that will have to wait until the next video. After a day of travelling, and with the weather not ideal, a bit of quiet relaxation was in order. Mtunzini is a small town on the coast in the heart of Zululand. Located along the Umlalazi River, this hidden gem is a hotspot for all manner of wildlife, from antelope and vervet monkeys, to the tiny mudskipper fish in the mangrove swamps. Mtunzini doesn't have much going for it in terms of shopping or industry, except for a few small businesses, a fish farm, and one of the main undersea cables linking South Africa to the World Wide Web. But arriving back in this hidden coastal gem, I noticed a significant increase in construction. I worry that the quiet and peaceful atmosphere will be lost if this town grows. But, as with so many places in South Africa, the playground of the middle class is surrounded by poverty, and expansion might bring jobs and money. Until then, I will continue to enjoy the wide, empty beaches of Mtunzini. That is, when I'm not in online meetings. 
I didn't actually take any time off work for this particular holiday. No, I can we can still hear you. Hello. You want to be part of my video? If the answer is no, then I won't use it. I wasn't always working though, and was delighted to have some friends over for the weekend so I could show them firsthand just how special this town was. Of course, being used to the big city, I had forgotten that small towns tend to close up on weekends. Closed, closed, closed. Let's see if there's anything over there. The prawn shack is very much closed. No idea. Oh wait, this is open. Yeah. Do you want to quickly have a look? Not everywhere was closed, however, and I managed to buy another pandemic era face mask for my collection. In other words, I got crabs in Mtunzini. But the charm of this town is not in shopping, and whether the stores are open or closed, there is plenty to see such as the magnificent Raffia Forest. It's just that getting there was easier said than done. I don't know if the car will get past that log, but I don't know if our shoes will get past that puddle. Right, let's... Let's, let's investigate. Also, your slops are going to be full of squishy mud. Do you want to walk the rest of the way? I you picked the back wrong back. shoes for this. Oh, you're telling me. Mugs off as well. <laughs> okay, but at least yours are cheap. These are expensive shoes. These are vans. <laughs> They're vans. Okay. We're all really woefully underprepared. That's the best kind of adventure. But at least the road is open, unlike every single shop we've been to today. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna... I'm not... I can't, like... <laughs> That's just, that's just a river over there. Okay. Turning around. Okay, and, and come back and reverse into that. Slowly, reverse slowly. There we go. But if you keep going straight down there, then we can then we'll potentially find the raffias again. And then we'll go find a normal yes. place to eat. This is Seacom. Oh, hey. That's this is where the main uh, internet cable for the east coast of South Africa comes in. Wow. That's pretty cool. That's awesome, actually. Jeez, it looks like really nice. Every time you don't drink, you Eventually, we got there. The Raffia Forest. And it was magnificent as ever. These trees can grow to be more than 24 meters or 80 feet tall and have some of the longest leaves of any plant on earth. In their shade, an entire subtropical ecosystem thrives. The origins of this beautiful forest, it was a farm of raffia plants to make fiber by prisoners, so essentially slave labor, and the plantation closed down and the forest remained and it is now South Africa's largest haven for the palm nut vulture um, because they only eat palm nuts this is me being educational me being Madam tour guide
and their their service is good. They have their own website, so you can. Like, not a sponsor. We're no. just talking about. <laughs> Hashtag not sponsored. We're just talking about the phones. I always, for me, whenever I'm looking at phones, none of the specs except the camera matter to me. Because I'd say camera and onboard storage. Storage, obviously, yes, but um, but you know when you're traveling around and you don't want to carry all this gear because you don't know what in you're going to encounter. Having just a phone that on, you can keep in your pocket in case something interesting happens that you want to document is always. And it's also awesome to have like the wide angle, like the wide is quite. quite I, I, my, the thing I look forward is battery life. I want my phone to last a long time when I charge it because if we get to charge my phone. We ended the day with a stop at a local favorite, the clay oven. It was impossible to ignore the hallmarks of South Africa's pandemic lockdown here, from the empty seats to the lack of beers in the fridge due to the country's strict alcohol ban. But nevertheless, the clay oven has always had excellent food and even more excellent cats. Yes. I have a uniform when I work at home. You have a uniform when you work at home? Yes. Like when you're on a spag pool? No. Like it just doesn't have pants. Yeah. Shirt, boxes, stuff. Sometimes a dressing gown. Yeah, a dressing gown. Even when I messaged Franco for the first time, saying I'm at the office, and the first thing he said was, What's it like in pants? If it seems to you like Mtunzini is all boardwalk strolls through the forest and cute little restaurant, my dad had some valuable reminders that beyond the quiet and relaxation is the intensity of nature. I've even been chased by zebra. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. not fun either. That's yeah, also scary. There's a, a ski boat club launches in the reserve. And then a guy with his boat come, you know, I mean, come out. Uh, so he, he comes up with his car and the zebra just got a fright, so they so they were caught between me and the car. And the same thing, they thought, no, the car was too big, they <laughs> come for me. And there's three zebra just came. Much like my father, I would soon also have a story to tell. It's a photo. Oh. I mean, no, it's not a photo, it's a video. <laughs> it's a video. I don't even know what I'm doing at the point you at this put point. That in there, definitely. That'll make it <laughs> I will put that in. I'll put all of this in. All of everything I'm saying right now will be in the video. And I'm gonna keep talking awkwardly. Longer and longer. <laughs> I'm gonna keep talking longer and longer until it just gets very annoying to anyone who watches this video. And all of this probably will be probably including you. Video. Probably including you in the future. Definitely including me in the future. If you sprain your ankle coming down right before a hike, I'm going to be cross. Five point six. Thank you. Thanks. The Umlalazi River and surrounds make up a protected reserve great for fishing, bird watching and nature hikes. One of these hikes took us along the river 
to the sea and back, a total distance of around 10 kilometers. as fit as I was, this lockdown, lack of sporting events to run in and things, it's not even, it's not even a very intense hike, but I'm struggling a little bit, it's very pretty though. Not a very intense hike indeed, we would soon learn that I had spoken just a little bit too soon on that one. Oh my goodness! Desmond, go help your girlfriend. I'm so sorry. I'm just for you. No, it's actually fun. I can focus on filming and doing this, can I? That's a terrible idea. And much more graceful than me. Than the you, yes. <laughs> but, um, it's always entertaining. Oh. Man, it oh. looks so easy. <laughs> <laughs> Just jump, Desmond. This is much, this is not as bad as the, the previous challenge. Yeah, and I know what this is. I'm just kind of proud that I didn't fall completely bodily into the water. At least I kind of recovered. I'm proud that your camera survived because from my, from my angle it looked like I was about to fall off That's your shoulder. I fell because I was like holding it. And it came very close, when you fell down, it came very close to like knocking on the pole that you're walking on. It would have been fine if it knocked, it would just be momentum. It's been whacked with a boomerang before, so... Uh, I've got questions. Um, children. Climb, climb it, climb it, climb it. I don't know if you'll hear me. GoPros aren't known for their amazing audio. But I mean during a pandemic, everyone's told to social distance. What better what better place is there? Look, look here's me. Nobody there? Nobody there? In the world, in the world, 
being plagued by an infectious disease, what better place to be? I had never seen a stingray in the wild before, and here I was at the beach with a GoPro that could go underwater. What could go wrong? Okay, so you're probably wondering what just happened. It was a little bit quick, so let's see that again. As I was walking in the sand, my camera completely missed the stingray. My foot, however, did not. Next thing I knew, this prehistoric slimy beast with its googly eyes was on me, and I was in the water thrashing around like a maniac. I think both of us were equally freaked out. One more time. Look at that thing. Look at that stinger on its tail. Lesson learned about chasing strange creatures in the water for sure. Uh, back to land. Back to land. While we were all glad that I had escaped unharmed, the stingray wasn't quite done with us yet. As a last act of vengeance for my trespassing, the beast grabbed my dad's prized fishing lure, and the fight of the century ensued.
Speaking of the one that got away, it was time for us to get away from the beach and make the long trek back home. Understandably exhausted, we ended the day in the only way that seemed appropriate. Call me Ishmael, some years ago, never mind how long precisely, having little or no money in my purse, and nothing particular to interest me on shore, I thought I would sail about a little and see the watery part of the world. Having bid farewell to my friends, there could be no doubt that this little seaside escape had done me good. But something was missing. A fish! Oh, to catch a fish! It is not that I have ever been terribly excited by the prospect of fishing. I don't have the patience to sit around and wait for a bite. But after my encounter with the stingray, I felt there was a certain score that needed to be settled. Back out at the river mouth, my dad caught another flathead. I was, however, not so lucky. And we opted to try again at another spot later in the week. River, there were plenty of signs of life. Smaller fish sheltering from predators in the shallows, but nothing that would take my bait. Partially, I think, because of interference, shall we say, from the growing number of holidaymakers drawn each year to this town. on etiquette. If you see people fishing in the river in a nature reserve, don't do what this guy's doing and spin around and make waves everywhere, please. How anyone is supposed to fish with speed boats going up and down the river is really 
beyond me. But this is the thing, is as this little town becomes more and more popular and a more sought after destination, more and more people means more and more traffic on the river. And what made this place so special to me is gonna get lost. Well, I hope not. But it's concern. Moving even further upriver by the end of the day, we tried again. But no matter where we were or what we did, the fish were just not biting. I've been fishing for a few days now and I mean I'm not against doing traditionally masculine things. I know a lot of people in my position, uh, they are, but I quite enjoy it. I'm just not very good at it. Consistently, no matter where or when I go fishing, all I seem to catch is seaweed. Still, we keep trying. It was my last day in Umtunzini before returning home. And we had moved from the ocean to the river to this little man-made pond in search of a fish. Any fish. <sighs> my entire life I've not hated but not been a huge fan of fishing and now when I'm genuinely trying and when my father's going out of his way to set things up for me not one bite I think the fish here are just transphobic big As the sun began to set for the final time, I was starting to lose hope. Until, suddenly... Not exactly Captain Ahab's white whale, but after hours of frustration, here at last was my little prize. I could go home with my head held high. Okay, Bloom I talk. Oops. I need to off it. Okay, okay, you can do it yourself. There you go. Be free. I love Mtunzini. It is the perfect remedy to the stress and chaos of the big city, and a great, albeit temporary, escape from one's troubles. But after a little more than a week in the fresh coastal air, it was time to wake up from the dream. Ah. 
جب I've got my ID and driver's license as backup, just in case. Yes. Well, I hope nothing in there resembles a weapon to whoever scans it, but there's nothing in there. So, I just got through security. Scanny people. And again, um, they didn't believe that my passport photo is me, which I'm sincerely flattered about. Sincerely, I'm flattered. But it will become a problem if I don't address it. I just can't address it during lockdown. Um, I mean, the guy might have been joking. I don't believe that's you, he said. Uh, luckily, I travel with other whole bunch of documentation that could hopefully back me up photos at different times my student id all of that That's the end.